Um, so thank you ladies for being on the call. Um, as all of you know, Nancy is up in the air flying right now with two little boys. So hopefully that is going very well for her. I know she was very nervous about that. Um, so Des and I just kind of wanted this call to be a little bit more interactive. We kind of hear from all of you ladies. So we're going to kind of put you on the spot this morning. Um, and we want to start off with hearing about any of your weaknesses that you're having in the business. So don't be afraid to kind of put yourself out there because we kind of want to tailor each answer for you to help you to get your momentum back up or just help in any area. So who would you go first? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. We're all going, so, you know, yeah, take yeah, the pressure sorry. off yourself. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> well, that means that you volunteered then since you said that. Yes, Jessica, and it's your first time too. So <laughs> I vote for Jessica going first. <laughs> now we're all ganging up on me. Okay. It's all love. It's all love. Well, so what's the question now? What's, what's, um, okay. I'm just asking. Is there any weaknesses that you're finding in your doTERRA business? Anything that you're struggling with that you could really use help with? I, I think that probably my, and I talked to this, I talked about this to Nancy last time I spoke with her and I think my biggest struggle is probably follow up. Um, I'm pretty good at sampling and, and, using the product in front of people and, and they really like my story. And I, I did, you know, finally one class all by myself and I got really great feedback from that. However, um, I'm just a little disorganized in my follow-up and I think a lot of it actually comes from being afraid that people aren't going to be as successful or happy with their, uh, mm -hmm. product as I want them to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, so I know, I kind of know like what I need to do, but it always helps to have others feedback and stories too. I think, I think some of my fear comes from not having enough, a lot of experience in this and, um, but anyways, that's, yeah. No, that was great. I think follow up, to be honest with you, is something that everybody in the back of their mind struggles a little bit with sometimes. Um, one thing that I personally like to do, so when I send out my samples, I let people know, um, just like medicine, what may work for me might not work for you. So if for any reason this oil doesn't give you the results that you want, rest assured, don't worry, I'll sample you another oil. So that kind of already sets you up for if they say they didn't get the results they wanted, no worries, we're gonna get them a different oil in their hand. So that kind of takes the fear out of them saying it didn't work, right? Yeah. And then also just really explaining to them how to use it. So um, that's a script that I like to use. Um, Des, do you have anything that you want to chime in for that? Um, well, Jessica, you mentioned that you said you already know what you need to do. Can, can I ask what is that? Um, it's, it's I, I need to get over the fear aspect. Um, I think the little details will come. Um, I think I'm already... When I've when I've gotten over the fear of it, I've actually okay. you know written down. I've I've done some scripting that's worked well. Um, I've had a lot of success, and the feedback that maybe isn't you know successful, I've done exactly <clears throat> what Andrea just said and and prescribed them something different and explained to them with confidence that yes, everybody's body's a little bit different and um, different body chemistries and things like that. So I think more it's a, is it, it's a hesitation, um, an internal hesitation and fear that I need to get over. So to take it a little bit deeper, sorry, the therapist to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's, yeah. So how do you get over that fear? Cause you're saying I got to get over the fear, but mm -hmm. okay. So how do you do it? What's your, what is that step? Do you know it or do you not know it? It's okay if you don't. I was just I don't have, yeah, I don't have a specific answer. I think, um, it helps when I journal. Um, it helps when I get together with people like-minded. You know, I just had a energy clearing and archangelic light session and Reiki session last week, which was very helpful. Okay. Um, so, so it definitely like sounds it like it's more of a personal block than mm -hmm. more of a yeah. doing, because you do know what to do. I think, I think so, yeah. Okay, okay. I was just 
was curious. I wanted to take it like a little bit and understand that where it was coming from. Cause I think that's a lot of the things here is we're going to talk about, and this is, I feel like this is like, it's so the same for the business is somebody comes to you and says, I have a headache. Um, I have anxiety. Okay. That's the symptom. What are we, what's, what's the ailment? And same thing, you know, we're saying we're scared. We're, where does that come from? Let's dig deeper and figure that out. So it sounds like you kind of know where that's coming from. It's just you digging that up, digging that up a little bit more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I've kind of, I've kind of decided this, this summer months while I'm working more, um, I am trying to get in, dig into that and do some more, mm -hmm. focus more on personal development. And then the fall when I'm working mm -hmm. less, we'll be really pushing forward. Oh, who is this? We have a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that with us. And, um, you know, open up the floor ladies. Like I feel like some of you on here, that is your strength. And of some of us, it's our weakness. Um, who could support her? Because we're a team here. That, I feel like that's of. mine too, for sure. There's that like fear of moving forward and, um, and I think it's a fear of what people will think too. And maybe it won't be go the way I hope it will, or, you know, that kind of a thing. Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mom, <laughs> can you so, so I okay. I obviously, I always love what does. No, I don't want to do. Hold on. Um, but it's really just a mental block. So you know what it is. You know it's your personal fear that's stopping you. And it's really just getting over that hump and pushing yourself and putting yourself out there. So the more you just make yourself uncomfortable, the more comfortable you're going to be. It just really is. And I promise you, I've been doing this for two and a half years. I still get nervous if the oils are going to work. But they always work. Always. I'm always surprised at the extent. So you're definitely not alone. Just put yourself out there. Or if they don't work, there's always a reason why either they're not yeah. using it consistently or appropriately. Or, mm -hmm. or right. Or they're or um they're decided, oh well I wanted I used that for a few days and then I decide like with more of the, the supplements and the skin, the long term skincare, um, and they're like, yeah, I use it a few days, and then I decided to go back to my phototherapy and my other medications that are heavy duty, just mm. to, and see. I'm like, wow, yeah. okay, <laughs> then <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's always a reason. I'm I'm the same way. Like every time that I have, I mean, the oils probably ninety nine point nine percent of the time do surprise me and and work better than I originally anticipate. So I just need to remember that and, you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, I think, like everything that we do in this business, it all stems from fear. We're, other, we're in different stages of just starting to contact someone, whether we're following up, whether we've been doing it for years. And, and I had a situation come up where I'm going to be working with somebody who is extremely knowledgeable, a businessman, and I, he's going to possibly be one of my leaders, but I asked for help from him mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure how that would come off. So you, you fear it will hit you at different stages, but it's just like Jessica said, it's just that personal development. It's starting that now because it's not going to keep stopping. And we know that too. It, it, it's life, not just this business. Yeah. Um, but I said it last week, I've said it before and I'll keep saying it is, we're all doing something that we've never done before. We are walking uncharted territory. These are things that we have never done, that our parents have never done, our grandparents have never done. And not saying that money is the key to everything to happiness, but we are literally striving to make money like nobody I know in my family has ever made. Like that is, that's huge. And with that comes huge personal development. Um, and Nancy touched on this last time where she kind of was like, the outcast in her family like already and I had a little bit of that too because I was just always different 
So we're, we're all doing this, you know, together and, and at least exploring this personal development, like you're saying, Jessica, like at least I could have these calls and vent and know that I'm not alone in this, but um, that we all have fear in these different stages. I wouldn't even be as far as I am today in this business um, without just the little bit of, well, a lot, but mm -hmm. the support through this business um, with just Ray and Nancy. And now, you know, I'm just now starting to touch into, tap into this whole group of um, amazing people and um, just excited to see where it's gonna go, so. Yay, I'm excited too. Yes, me three. I <laughs> wanted to say, and you can tell me if you agree with this or not, ladies, but I kind of think fear, in a way, is growth, getting over fear. If it scares you, I feel like that means it's pushing in the right direction for you to grow, like, self-development-wise. So don't be afraid of it. That just means you're growing, you're expanding your wings, you're taking off for flight, and you're just becoming a better person. So don't be afraid of fear. Fear is good. <laughs> yeah. And then just, you know, we talk, it seems like, Jessica said that it's stemming from um, the block that she's having. But just in case anybody else is having um, this, this block, but it's more of a I'm not sure what to do next, just a couple tips like Andrew was saying about the dialogue and the script you can use. But another couple things is, so I, I don't like labels, but I'm always up front and I let my, my whole team, my, my peeps know, like I'm ADHD, so I have a lot of stuff going on up here. So I do need a system and it's not perfect, but... I know at least what I've, what's worked for me and what I suggest to other leaders too is um, either if you are into computers, maybe doing an Excel spreadsheet, or if you're more into handwriting, having a binder where you can track everything by month. So you can have, you know, name, date that it was sampled, date you followed up, what oils you sampled, and then a notes category, whether you're creating that in Excel spreadsheet or that, so that you could see month by month who exactly you're sampling, who you need to follow up with. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like Andrea said, just digging a little deeper, is I'm already setting them up before I even sample their oils um, for that follow-up. Before they even, right in the beginning when I'm asking to sample them, I'm already saying, you know, after, after two days you use them, I'm going to be following up with you. And then when I send them out, oh, remember, after two days I'm going to follow up with you. I want to get your feedback. Like, it's multiple times I keep saying it. So they are the ones that either beat me to the follow-up, just have Uh-oh, I think you timed out. Oh, I thought that was just me saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I think she disappeared. Desiree, come back. <laughs> such a great picture of her, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. We lost you for a moment. <laughs> it just all of a sudden, like, disappeared. And then it popped back up. Like, literally, that was, like, the weirdest thing. <laughs> I'm magic. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great speech. We were all like yeah, intent. Yeah. And oh. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, just, you know, following, if you actually have, you know, if that's not your block personal development wise, those are just some tips that either I use myself or I give to other leaders and just having a really, really tight knit organization structure that works for you and your style. So. Absolutely. And we all know the saying, the fortune is in, in the follow-up. So, I mean, the nice thing about that list that Des was saying is you can always go back to it and keep following up with people. And follow up with, don't stop following up with them. I mean, I have so many people I'll follow up and invite to a class and they can't come. And then I'll set myself up like Des said for the next time. Be like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and invite you to the next one. I'll remind you next Sunday. Is that okay? And, of course, they're always going to say yes. Or you could say, you know, hey, I, I see your schedule's a little busy. Maybe we can meet one-on-one. -on -one. So there's always ways to get around from the fear of feeling like maybe you're bugging them too much. Um, because that's, again, I think that's just another mental block and a fear. It's in our head. Yeah. Totally in your head. <laughs> I, th I think if you're genuine with your, with, you know, most people don't see it really as being bugging. They see it as caring. And exactly. Especially if you're not if you're more focused on is the product working for you, not 
Mm-hmm. What else can What else can you buy? What else can you buy? What else can you buy? Uh, um, at least that's how I think people are thinking about it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Because you're generally caring about them. I mean, we all know how we, we sample. You know, it all starts with a conversation. It's not like, hey, I sell oils. Want to buy oils? Like, you know, <laughs> we're not like the It Works girls that plaster their social media with like new team members. Like, you know, that's not our style. Um, so like, you know, not to knock, you know, others, but that's just not how we are. We genuinely care about people. We want to change people's lives and people pick up on that. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing I really love about doTERRA is it true. It doesn't really feel like work in the sense because you are, you're helping people and the oils kind of do all the work for you and you just kind of help them and guide them on that path. So I would agree with Des. I, I like our approach a lot better than some of the others. No names. <laughs> um, is there any other mental blocks or anything else, ladies, that we're struggling besides follow-ups? Oh, yeah, we're going to call on you if you don't say yeah. something. <laughs> I was actually ready to go first, but then I was enjoying this little parody earlier. Really. <laughs> Let it happen. Um, for me, I've noticed that my biggest mental block is my <laughs> um, I have a very hard time self-motivating. I am kind of the anomaly in the situation where instead of a lot of people having, you know, jobs and kids and all this, I have had no job and no children. And instead of putting my time and effort into doTERRA, I've been traveling and doing this and going here and going there. And it's not that I ignore the business, but I just get so focused on something and then I'm over here and focus on that. And it's just, it's hard for me to bring that back full circle. So it's more just about finding ways. And I've been, you know, working with Desiree, finding ways to motivate myself and having other people motivate me. There used to be a time in my life where I was all about doTERRA in that phone call with Desiree. And for the rest of the week, I kind of forgot about it. And then as soon as I saw her face again, I was like, yes, doTERRA, doTERRA, doTERRA. And then as soon as she was like out of sight, out of mind, I would lose that. So for me, it's been mostly about just keeping my own motivation going. Um, And I'm just starting to realize kind of that that's been the biggest, that's been the missing kind of link with everything going on. Because when I actually get focused on it, I'm really, really good at what what I do, but it's just a matter of keeping my focus and keeping my attention. learning that I have potentially some ADHD going on in there. Um, So just kind of uh, working with that has been, I think, my own biggest struggle. So. (laughs) Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's, what is your why? My why? (laughs) My why is because I've led a life of popping pills and, oh, I have paper cut. Let me take a painkiller for it. Um, I came into doTERRA with uh, injuries from car accidents and I was on all different sorts of medications and over the last year and a half I've gotten myself off of everything and coming from a place where I knew how easy it was for me to just grab something um, it's just so important for me now to show people that you don't have to do you know, what your doctor tells you. you can, there's other methods and there's, there's natural methods and the natural methods are, you know, very, very effective. Um, so for me, it's, it's honestly about, I don't want to say proving to other people that you can do it, but because I know my background has been so heavily into just taking medications, um, and versus what my lifestyle is now is a very natural, healthy approach to everything. That's, that's my biggest why, because I want to help other people that have been in the same situation. That's cute. Yes. Isn't that that. a wonderful why? It's so powerful. And I I appreciate, I, sorry, I didn't realize that I asked you like a really personal question. So I appreciate you being so (laughs) vulnerable and honest with me. (laughs) I've never even met you. Hello. (laughs) But that's, I, just and, I, and I'm sorry, Andrea and Desiree, that I'm like taking over no, for a second here. About- <laughs> but as I was hearing her, her, you know, struggling with motivation, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, how would I get over that? And it's like, well, let's understand the why. 
And um, I think that's an amazing why. And I think that that's just so huge. And if that's not motivation, if you don't believe that that's so important every single day, I, I don't know how else to, this is where you other ladies can, can step in, but mm -hmm. I think that's incredible. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. We love that, Jessica. We want everybody to jump in because we all, like Des said earlier, we all have different strengths and weaknesses and we all have something we can bring to the table and we can all learn from one another. Um, that's what's so awesome about these calls and our Facebook group page. Um, some of us are going through the same things and that's some of those things are our strengths. Um, I, what I really like about this call is that we all know what we need to do. So Laura's saying, She's not motivated, but she knows she needs to get motivated. She knows what she's not doing, but so how do we get there? Like Des was saying, like the mental block, like how do we get over it? And it's really just this yourself, like digging deep into that why and pushing yourself over that hump. For me, I, I share the same thing with you a little bit, Laura. I can, I can get super highly motivated, but then there's other times where I can just be like, I'm just in a different zone. So it's just staying motivated in that space that you want to be so for myself personally what I do is I love motivational books I love motivational speakers I love motivational type kind of music that puts me in a good mood um, reading affirmations in the morning uh, reading a devotional if, if you're if you are a Christian and that's something that you do that can kind of put you in a good headspace um, making lists like I like to make a list the night before and when I first wake up from like 10, and I hate to say that's when I wake up, 10 o'clock, but from like 10 to 2 or 10 to 1, I'm going to get as much doTERRA done as possible, and what ends up happening is my whole day ends up being doTERRA, and it's awesome. So it's just setting goals for yourself and lists, and that's what works for me. So um, ladies, please share what you do to keep yourself motivated, because what, again, what works for me might not work for you. And then the calls, I think having calls, if that call with Des is so successful for you, maybe you make that I'm gonna call every day with her and get you in her space. You know? That's what it energy. So I mean that might be good for you. I already told her, I don't even know if I can afford her as a life coach, but I need her in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my leaders are lucky then. <laughs> it's funny because we actually decided or I told her I was like you know I need a little bit from you every day so we decided Monday and Wednesdays we're gonna have like a 15 minute call and yesterday it was okay what are you gonna get done today and I think let's say there were six things I wanted to do I think I hit five of them awesome. and I like kept in contact with her the whole day and I was like yeah. I did this I did this I did this so I need that like I need to tell someone I'm gonna do it because I don't follow through with what I say. I feel terrible inside. So it's kind of like a two-edged sword. If I say it, I'm going to do it. So if I, if I get it out of my mouth, then I have yeah. that. <laughs> and I think this is going to work really well for you. Obviously, like I'm kind of keeping quiet because me and Laura talk about this, I feel like, all the time. So I wanted to hear what everybody else gave her feedback. You know, with business too, ladies, we are our own boss, essentially, right? So mm -hmm. I don't have anybody kind of be like, get to work, check in at, you know, 9 a.m., check out at 8, you know, what is it today? So it is a lot of pressure on ourselves, but we have to keep ourselves motivated because we are our own boss. And then that's where you kind of lean in on your mentor calls with your leaders. It's not so much a check-in to see how you're doing, even though in a sense it is to make sure, you know, we're on the same page and how we can help you. But it's also a way to help keep you accountable. So you're doing what you're doing. So I love, love, love that you're going to be doing more calls with Des. I think that's fantastic. And if any of you girls, that's a weakness for you, contact your upline or anybody in your organization to have that little, like, it's kind of like a little pep talk, like a little cheerleader in the morning. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. And we yeah. all have time for that, for sure. Yeah. So, and I have to give props because Carly does that too. And like, and like Laura just said, she just started too. So um, I think that so again, being vulnerable and just being so upfront with your feelings and what's going on with you in here that Laura did because she came to me and was like, okay, I need to do these calls. And I had offered them to her probably a, a little bit more of a month ago or so. And she was just finally ready. So it's just when each person is at that point and they're ready. And some people, you know, they work when you have your own leaders, 
they work so great independently and they're this and they're organized and then then all of a sudden you're going to have another leader that maybe needs more help. And like Laura is literally telling me, no, I need you to do these things with me where somebody else would might feel offended. <laughs> Laura thrives on that. So it's learning that in your leaders as well. So hopefully this is like a nice, you know, example too, when you start to lead multiple leaders and, and, uh, and they have two different styles. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that. Does, is everyone doing mentor calls with their leaders on, on this, on this call right now? Oh, yeah. I guess we could all do thumbs up. Yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Another thing I wanted to add to this, because Nancy wanted me to touch on it, um, of why those calls are so important. Um, a lot of us are really active on social media. <laughs> Facebook, or we have our own blogs. Um, and some of us don't do that. Some of us are just kind of, you know, we're word of mouth. We, we're doing everything kind of behind scenes. And sometimes we don't see that. Uh-oh. We end in 10 minutes. Okay, I got to hurry. Sorry. My thing just popped up on the screen. Um, so it's good to communicate with your leader because say, for example, say Des and I didn't talk for a couple weeks and she's super active on Facebook, but say she wasn't. And it, to me, it would kind of maybe look like she wasn't really doing anything or putting in the work. So I would maybe feel some kind of way or it's just really good to communicate to let your leaders know what you're doing. So one, we can reach down and help you with support, with incentives, and um, maybe you need help with the class. We always want to be at all of your classes. Um, and then, again, just to kind of check in to make sure, you know, how we can help and support you. So those mentor calls are very, very, very important, even if it's only for 10 minutes. I know a lot of times we give them a call and it ends up going 30 minutes or maybe an hour. Try to keep it at 30 minutes the best you can, but if it's only 10 minutes, 10 minutes is better than nothing. So those are very important. I just wanted to throw that in there really fast for Nancy. <laughs> um, so nine minutes down. Um, hey, Carly's up. <laughs> what, what else can we go over really quick? Carly, Carly Carly's up. Carly. Um, hold on. There. I um, kind of like what was mentioned earlier, just the fear. <laughs> and um, it was funny, on my last call with Des, I asked her a question and she was like, this is such a Carly question. <laughs> and it was, um, I guess, it, like the fear of not knowing enough about and being prepared. Like in my other job that I've been doing forever, I come across all different kinds of questions, things that I've never heard before and get put on the spot. And I just know how to go with it. And it's just, practice but with this um it's I just have this fear of like what are people gonna think they're not, not gonna think I know anything and and I know that's not true because <laughs> I do know some um so I think just getting over that like block like we've been talking about <laughs> Um, or some things that you think can help you get over the block? What are some things that you, that you think, I don't know, or maybe you don't know, I'm not sure. Um, just pushing through, keeping to going forward, um, keeping our calls. <laughs> Those have been really helpful. <laughs> um, and, and I do need to get myself um, more organized because I do feel um, – I feel more um, like secure and um, less crazy up here when <laughs> when I am more organized and confident within myself too. Um, so that's that's part of it. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> I think just like with you said with your other job, it took time, and I feel mm -hmm. the same way. Like in the nursing field, yeah, I can throw anything at me, be able to prepare, deal with it. This is, I think, just going to take time and continued um, education and continued experience and support. And I think we'll all get there, you know, in our own time. And in the meantime, we just need to focus on each day, not letting the fear um, set us back too far you know at least that's how I'm gonna take it that's what I'm gonna do so no I like that Jessica um, I liked what you said Carly finding your confidence um, 
And it is being confident. It's putting yourself out there on the line. That's how you build the confidence. I mean, when you're sampling these people, as far as they know, you're the expert, you know? Mm -hmm. And so be with that. And mm -hmm. you always have your oil Bible with you. Um, yeah. You know, you, you're prepared. You know you're prepared. It's just mentally. It's mental block. Right. So right. Um, I feel like maybe on our next call we can really talk about mental block breakthroughs. But um, mm -hmm. to finish up with this, I think it's – it's just getting over that block for you, feeling comfortable, continued education for sure, like Jessica said, because the more knowledge you have, the more comfortable you're just going to feel 100%. Mm -hmm. um, can mm -hmm. I ask what kind of questions you're afraid they're going to ask you that you're not going to know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Because um, they don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I can just go look it up if I don't exactly. know. It's not... <laughs> I was just thinking maybe I should put together like a separate binder or something where I want it because I read stuff all the time and I find things and but you I like read research. it and then it yes but then it's hard for me like it's like I, I have it in here but it's hard for me to like get I'm it out I like, just relay way. it I'm the same so way maybe I just need to okay. start like it's okay. taking stuff and having it with me and or not and <laughs> it's okay it's okay I've, I've had people say if I when I do remember verbatim like the studies and the quotes and yeah stuff, I've I've said it and I've even had a few people say well there's studies about everything and so sure. they, they <laughs> question your sources and then it makes me question my sources and then I'm yeah. not like, I'm not a researcher I don't know how to verify necessarily the best sources and so I, I'm like well I believe it but you know <laughs> how do you <laughs> and it's working for me <laughs> yeah like how do you get and that's where I think even if people don't believe the stats that you and then the information that's mm -hmm. on the internet yep. all, what you have to fall back on is personal experience mm -hmm. and, experience and you with know your, that it's successful stuff and like I think for so many people too those personal experiences at least for me when I hear about that kind of stuff that's what really hits me I like the science and I really do find it fascinating and I want that to back it up but it's those personal stories that touch make, them really yeah 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 and then you're working towards it. it you're, you're <laughs> doing it as we talk as we speak now I think it's 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 slowly turning on like more you're like okay it's 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 okay yeah it's, the last thing you do is, you know what? Let me research that for you. And then mm -hmm. they actually respect you more because you didn't make up some shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Part of my language, ladies. But you didn't make up like you're just trying to sell them. Like, you know what? Yeah. Actually, I don't know the answer for that. Let me look into that and do some research. And then they respect you so much more for doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have three minutes left, ladies, and Des and I wanted everybody to leave on a positive note, so I just wanted to hear from everybody, um, what is your strengths in doTERRA? Mm -hmm. What are you excelling in? Um, what do you love doing? What's your strengths? So we'll go Carly first. Um, I think my strengths are being motivated to talk about it, just not necessarily the follow-ups and all those other things, but just being excited about um, oils and sharing the information with people. And, um, yeah. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> you can see your passion in her face just now, right? <laughs> like Christmas tree. <laughs> all right. Two minutes. Jessica, go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that also just communicating to people, and I feel like I connect with people pretty well um, about the oils and sampling. And also, I think having a medical background is, is a strength and a weakness at the same time. But I'm, we're going to focus on the strength part. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that would be my biggest one, I think. Yeah. I would buy oils from you. I feel comfortable with you. I like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show <a> good aura. <laughs> All right, Laura, we got a minute and 30 seconds left. What's some of your strengths, love? So I think my best strength is I have absolutely no shame. I don't – I will go up to anyone and at, at any point, no matter where I am, and um, start prying into their life and find out what oils they need. Um, I like 
people could be talking about whatever situation. I'll be like, oh, girl, you need some lavender in your life. And I have, like, that personality where I could joke around about it, but I also come across as I really know what I'm talking about because once I start talking about it, like, I will give them every fact. I'm a fact giver because I work well with facts, so I like giving facts out to other people. Um, but I just really have no – See, that's where I don't have any fear. <laughs> that's awesome. That's huge for network marketing. So you're willing to put yourself out there. But girl, you need to do it. <laughs> Get out there. <laughs> Take us with you. <laughs> Live's going to be great for me. <laughs> I feel it already. All right, Des, do you want to share a strength with us? Um, like, I'm just an influencer. Now. I'm just an influencer. People, I hope this isn't so bad, people like me. People want to do things with me, be with me, hang out with me, and I'm an influencer, so in a positive way. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I'll add to mine, um, I'm a go-getter. I played sports all my life, so when I take on something, I want to be the best at it. So I think that's a, a